Hey everyone, Kevin McNulty, and it's great to be with you again. I hope you've been enjoying the uh, daily uh, messages that I trust are lifting up. We had a, well, quite a few people. Uh, eventually, they uh, watched and uh, were commenting on their, their uh, excitement about it. And I believe that today you'll have another great message that uh, for the next 20 minutes, you will, it will lift you, it will give you ideas, it will give you a hope, and it will give you some courage when you need it because today's message is about being encouraged, okay? And that, that's what I, uh, I think that everybody needs to have that courage come up out of them. Sometimes the situations around you uh, will not be any sort of uh, pillar that which you can stand on for courage, but there is a courage within you that will, can encourage you even when everything that has happened to you has gone wrong, or maybe even you have gone wrong, but yet you don't ever give up. And that's what my, my message is today, is you may be tired, but don't ever give up. David encouraged himself, is what the Bible said. He encouraged himself, because why? Everything was wrong. He had, been, obviously, the, the, the king of the country had, has, had been sending an army to find him and kill him. And uh, the 600 people that came with him to, to uh, run with him, uh, 200 of them were exhausted. And so he was, he was uh, really having troubles. Uh, and he went to a town called Zigleg where uh, he, he was hiding out, but there was nothing there of value, nothing there of purpose. A very discouraging to him, very discouraging because the, uh, the, the Amalekites had gone into that. When they, when they left to do a battle, the Amalekites went into that, that city of Zigleg and took all their families, all their children, all their wives, and took them out. And so even after having being exhausted by a battle, they go, they go and they find that everything that they owned is gone. Everybody they know is gone. And so they actually were going to kill David. They were so discouraged. But, but, but God encouraged David. And if you need encouragement, today is a good place to be right here. Uh, and I just want to uh, start with a, a message, a, a story, and a sermon about, uh, uh, boy, i got so many wonderful things here, about being in this battle. Sometimes I'm, you're in a battle. Uh, and here's what the scripture says. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. The wiles of the devil. There is still a devil in the earth. And he has tricks. He has, he's slimy. He's, he's sneaky. And uh, it's, he, he, he's always looking for a ways to get into your life, get into your family, get into your finances, get into your future, get into your body, your health. And, and you have to say, hey, there is an enemy. We're not in heaven here. There is an enemy that's on this earth. And you need to stay strong. And that is be encouraged every day in order to overcome the wiles of the devil. Because I just want to let you know that, that there is a, a devil. And uh, after Bible school at home, the devil put his hand on my mouth. After two years of Bible school, I come home for the first time and lay down on my bed. And, up, and a devil put his hand on my mouth. And I'm like, mm, mm, mm. I'm, trying to, I'm trying to fight him, but I can't fight him because I have no mouth. My mouth is covered over. The devil knew that I was going to fight him. <laughs> and he's, so I just kept at it, kept at it until he broke loose. And then I cast him out, and I said to the Lord, I said, what is the devil doing in my house? This was my mother's house, and I hadn't been there for a couple of years. But what's he doing in my room? And uh, the Lord spoke to me, and he says, have you seen the music that's being played in, your, in the house? And I said, no, I haven't been here. So I went up to the, to the, uh, uh, where, the where the upstairs, where they played the, the music, and I looked at all the music, and oh my goodness, it was all very current, bad music, uh, bad singers that are corrupted, and their, their messages are evil. And and I'm looking at all that, and I start pulling it all out because I had just been affected by it. I pulled it all out, and I threw it all in the trash. Now that wasn't my music, and uh, I have sisters and brothers, so I don't know who the music belonged to. I knew it wasn't my mom, so it was one of my sisters or brothers. And so 
I found out, I, I can't tell the whole story because I don't have time. But anyway, just to, I'll tell you this story later. But I found out that uh, who, whose music it was. I took them to an event to distract them so they won't, uh, they won't uh, have the, you know, the problem of, of uh, yet with me of the, the fight over who, lost, who's, who took all of her music, you know. <laughs> and uh, anyway, God saved me, saved me so much because when she, when she, I took and she went to a different uh, uh, place than I did, a different preacher than I was listening to. And when she came back to the car after this event, she said, Kevin, did you know this guy that was teaching, he taught on music. And you know that my, my music is satanic. Based on what he said, I'm going to throw it all away when I get home because now I know that it's satanic. And I said, don't worry about that. I'll take care of it for you. Well, I had already taken care of it for her. <laughs> she still to this day, probably will watch this, uh, didn't know that I was the one who threw it all away. But anyway, I told her, don't worry, I'll take care of it. And it already was taken care of. And that is, but I tell you what, that there is a devil. We have to be aware of how he can get into our lives. And, uh, and we have to be encouraged when we find that we're in a battle. It says this in scripture, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. This is in Ephesians chapter 6, 10. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of the world against spiritual wickedness in high places. Boy, we've got some enemies, don't we? And you can't see them, but they're there. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. In other words, you're going to have to encourage yourself to stand in these times and in these, and in, as long as you're in this physical body, you're going to have to learn how to keep up in this body, be above what your enemy is thinking or what he's trying to do, whatever circumstances have come your way, you've got to be above it. You've got to be the, the, you've got to have the right response. What response is that? The Spirit of God on the inside of you rises up and speaks life to your future, life to your opportunities, life to your friends. Life is your future. And eternal life is your future. It's the eternal, eternal hell is the future of Satan. And we have to help people all over the world who are caught in either in some form of, of, of trick, some form of lie, some form of deceit that the devil has on them. And we are the answer for that. So to take on this armor of God, I can't go through all this armor. We don't have time for that. But we can go through some of it. Uh, it says, above all, take the, take the shield of faith, wherein you shall again be quenched you shall be you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. So this element of faith that you might say, well, what is faith? Well, I'm going to talk on that subject another day. But let's just today for you say faith is an action. In other words, a person of faith takes an action. Now, there are other definitions you could give, and I will give those. Uh, I'd like to do that for you sometime. But Today, let's just call it an action. In other words, you have pondered something, you've looked at something, and then you've made a decision about it, and then you have, what, taken an action. And that action is the release of your faith. And that faith is what brings all the angels and brings the resources of heaven to you. Hallelujah. Take the shield of faith, whereby you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. This is another element of that area that's in Ephesians 6 that I want to talk to you about. That the sword of the Spirit. What is it? The sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. There's only one aggressive weapon that of all the elements of this armor that God has given you, there's only one a piece of armor that is uh, an attacking armor. Everything else is a defensive armor, but a sword of the Spirit. What is that sword? That is the Word of God. Oh, if you could get excited, just find scriptures every day. Find at least two or three scriptures. Make them your scriptures for that day. I am so, here I've been at this 40 years, and yet I am more excited about the Bible today than I was over the last 40 years. It still is very much alive to me, and alive in me, and I'm expecting 
expecting it to be alive where I speak it because there is power in the word of God. And that word is for all people. Je the, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus himself is called the word of God. But then we have this written word of God that is, and, and he backs up that written word of God. And so it, it should produce life in everybody who reads it. But just don't read it to yourself. Read it to the devil. Read it to God. Read it to others. Make sure that you're full of this word. And, and make sure that every day you find something that comes alive in you. It enlarges you. And what does that do? That encourages you. When you say that nothing else that you see is working, there you can still see the Word of God, and it will work for you. I guarantee you. I promise you that. The sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Some people can be beaten by a, by a battle, but some people can be better by a by battle. So we all have to battle in this earth. We can't hide. We can't just lay down on the bed. Try laying down on a bed for a week. You'll want to get off that bed for so quick, <laughs> you know. But listen, that's not what life is. Life is we enter into the battle of our lives. And that is helping people, changing people, lifting people, uh, 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 pro providing for people. Uh, your, your ministry, your life, we all are ministers. You know that. It's not just somebody with a degree, but we all are ministers in our world. Your world and my world are different. And I, but I want to help your, you in your world by taking hold of that battle, taking hold of the sword of the Spirit, understanding the word that will apply to your way, your day, your say, and, and making it all a reality. And you say, wow, that's impossible. That's how I started the ministry. That's how I started my walk with God. Is This was such a coincidence that the number of things that happened to me at once, I said, there, there must be a God. I'm going to go search that out. I'm going to go find that out. And I found Jesus. Hallelujah. For if the trumpet give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself for the battle? So there's a sound that, had, that you have to hear that prepares you for the, for the battle, a sound. If, if you can't understand it, in other words, if you can only have a Bible in a foreign language and you can't understand it, it's not going to help you. you can, and, and you have to understand this. There is a voice on the inside of you when you become born again. And that voice is wanting to love you and to communicate that love and to show you that love and to help you, to provide for you, to give you something that is exciting about your life, something that is not only producing peace for your life, but in producing encouragement for your life. Encouraged to do what? Encouraged to do what you want to do. What do you want to do with your life? There's a spirit on the inside that says, yes, I'll do it with you. And this is the power of being born again. This is the power of starting over. Born again means you were born once, you died, and then you raised again from the dead, just like Jesus rose again from the dead to a new life, a resurrection life. You also have risen from the dead to a new life, a resurrection life. And that resurrection life is as powerful as the life of Jesus Christ. And because why? Because he has come to live in you and to think through you, to speak through you, to understand and to help you. Because why? Because he's got a destiny and your name's on that destiny. And it's something that you don't want to put on the shelf because you'll never see the results of your life if you just put it on the shelf. If you say you're too busy for God, if you're too busy for understanding, if, you're too, if you have lost all hope, if you are bored, and you say, you know, this, so many times people go to church and they're bored. They come home and they're bored. They go to work and they get bored. And they forget how to connect with the giver of life on the inside of them and to expect better things than what they're seeing, better things than what they're knowing, better things than what they've experienced. Why? Because the one on the inside of them is walking with you through your life to a better and a fulfilled destiny. Well, so when you look at the end of your days, you say, I have finished my course, just like the Apostle Paul said, it is done. I have done all. Hallelujah. <laughs> Some know not the meaning of the voice. Therefore, if I know, here's what he said. He said, therefore, 
If I know not the meaning of the voice, I shall be unto him that speaketh a barbarian. And he, he that speaketh shall be a barbarian unto me. So there is this importance, more than you can think, of, of understanding the voice of God, understanding the voice of Jesus Christ. Remember, with Jesus was the Word, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Listen, Jesus was the Word, and He became flesh and dwelt among us. So, you want to hear the voice of God? You want to understand it? You want to you want to act on it? Action is faith. Faith is action. You want that to happen in your life? Then you can by getting that Word inside of you. Start repeating it. Start thinking it. Start expecting it to happen in you. And it will happen in your ideas. It will happen in your finances. It will happen in your health. I thank the Lord for good health today. I thank you for him for good health every day. I speak good health to all the joints, all the sinews, all the blood vessels, all of the, all the parts of my body. Why? Because God said that there's a life in those words. And I want that life in my body. With long life will I satisfy you and show you my inheritance. You want long life? Start talking long life. Start thinking long life. Start believing long life. And start expecting. This today we're talking about having an expectation. And uh, I want you to have that, okay? So, like I said, I'll repeat it again. This is in 1 Corinthians 4. Uh, 14. Therefore, if I know not the meaning of the voice, I shall, I shall be unto him as speaking to a barbarian, and he shall speak, uh, uh, and, and he that speaketh shall be a barbarian unto me. In other words, we all have no connection. <laughs> I have spoken to cannibals. I could not speak their language. They've spoken to me. I've spoken to them. Thank God we had an interpreter. <laughs> and uh, that was a wonderful experience I had. Oh, boy. I think I'm, oh, we have a few more minutes. I think we can continue, and uh, I, someday we're going to do this, and we can talk back and forth to each other. <laughs> uh, so, there's so much in this. <clears throat> I like this story, about the story when Paul had gathered a, a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire. There came a viper out of the, fi out of the heat. Here he had just been through the, the, the sinking of his boat and, and uh, he, had, he had saved him, his own life already and saved the life of all those people that were on the boat by, by obedience to what the Lord had said to him to do. And so he had saved all their lives. He was making a fire so everybody could get warmed up and the snake comes out and bites him. And uh, they all say, oh, see, he's evil, and the devil's going to die right now. <laughs> and, uh, and he just shakes it off, thinks of it as nothing. It's just another little attack of the enemy, and he doesn't get shaken by it. Don't get shaken by those little attacks on your day. Just kind of ride him through. That's what he did. <laughs> and when the bar oh, boy, I tell you, uh, why do I bring that up? <laughs> Boy, I've got another, uh, this reaches into other stories. Woo! Mutt. <laughs> uh, and when the barbarians saw that the venomous snake, snake uh, beat, uh, uh, hand, uh, beat his hand, uh, bit his hand, and, uh, and they said among themselves, no doubt this man is a murderer, who though he has escaped the sea, yet venomous suffered, now, now he will not live. And he stood up, and he he shook off the beast into the fire, and felt no harm. Howbeit they looked when he could, when he should be swollen and fallen down dead suddenly. But after they had looked a great while, saw no harm had come to him, they changed their mind and said that he must be one with God. Well. That's, that's what you've got to understand, is that you're going to have some snake bites probably in your life. But just shake them off and say, listen, I'm not moved by these things. I'm not moved by the, back, uh, by the, by the, 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 the uh, delays. I'm not moved by the discouragement. I'm not moved by it. Why? Because um, I've got a reason, a purpose. The angels, the angels appeared to him and said, you must appear before Caesar. Listen, that's what, and we've got to finish with this. Because he said this, you must appear, the, the angel said to him, you must appear before Caesar. That gave him great confidence that there was something, a purpose in his life. And there's a purpose in your life. And you must appear before some. Why do I go around the world, 65 nations, and that's not it? We, I'm excited about some of the things. I hope you can appreciate that, to be excited about reaching other nations, other people, people who don't have the opportunities that we have here in America. 
I want to reach the people in America. We have a program here. Maybe you want to be a part of it. 50 states, 50 tents, 50 teams. Raise them up. We've already started one. We're going to start another one in about a month. And uh, we're, we're, we're going to do the 50 states. And but, but we're not going to forget the world. We're not going to forget Africa. I've got a, a nation in Africa waiting for me. If you have a heart for Africa, send me the resources necessary. I will take those resources. I will, I will communicate with you what I did with them as I got on a plane to reach Cote d'Ivoire, which is waiting for us, 10 regions of that country of Cote d'Ivoire, Ivory Coast. And there also is a great opportunity in, uh, in Europe where we had a breakthrough. They said it was going to take us five years to get a breakthrough in Belgium. We got it in a year and a half. And that breakthrough is there and it's waiting for us to return. The, the invitations are out, but we're going, to need, we're going to need you. We're going to need friends. We're going to need help to get these things done. And I appreciate you. I appreciate what the Lord is speaking to you. Uh, we've been going around the world for over 40 years and not, and not, not waiting. We're going. And so these are opportunities, and uh, I just appreciate all my partners that make them all possible. They're all because of you. It's all because of friends and partners that make things possible. And we're ready to take on the next task. We're ready to break down the next wall. We're ready to save the next soul. We're ready to go where no one has gone, gone before. And uh, I can say I've done that. <laughs> I have done that. I tell you what, nobody's gone to those cannibals like me. And, uh, and and then Leslie and I took a ship out from there, and uh, we were we were uh, uh, in this boat. And I got to close with this last story. I hope you enjoy it. We were in this boat, had a, a couple from uh, America come with us, and as we were getting to the island, there were seven thousand islands in the Philippine regions. And as we were getting to that island to plant a church, uh, that. <coughs> We, the, the sun started to go down, and we uh, could only we couldn't go up all the way to the to, so we had to get out on the water. And as we got out on the water, the sunshine hit the water, and we saw that there were thousands of snakes. That we were walking on snakes, <laughs> all of us. It's like six of us, all of us walking on snakes. And that's where we got our the name of our ministry. The pastor who was with us, uh, just observing, he said, "Boy, w w working with you is a real." Christian adventure. <laughs> and that's why we call ourselves Christian Adventures at uh, McNulty Ministries. And, uh, and uh, we're getting some new names right now. Uh, we are getting a name for the, for the USA work, Tent Nation, tentnation.com. And we're getting a new one. We've got a new work that we're debating right now. It's going to be a great one. I'll tell you that on a later date. But right now, uh, we, got off the, we got onto that island. Uh, those snakes did not bite us. And that island was controlled by a spirit that was controlled by a, a what do they call it when they are uh, voodoo uh, type people. And uh, <laughs> they have, they're all walking about all dumb, all, all quiet, not moving, not saying anything, not looking, not smiling. Uh, and, and I just said, who here has is, is, is got a real serious problem, real serious sickness? And uh, some of the boys were laughing. They brought to the front a deaf and dumb boy, born deaf and dumb. And I said, listen, everybody, because no one was listening or they were afraid to listen. I said, I'm going to lay hands on this boy. If, if God opens up his mouth and opens up his ears, I want you to follow Christ. And I said, how many will do that if, if this boy, baby, born deaf and dumb, if this man, now a man, if he, is, if he starts talking and hearing, you will you will give your life to Christ. Then most of them raised their hands and said, yeah, that's impossible, that's impossible. Prayed over him, his ears opened up, his mouth began to speak words. It was a shock to everybody who was laughing. It was a shock to the guy who was in charge of that island, the evil person in charge of that island. Later on, I'll tell you about that. We came back a year later. There, the church was planted, and uh, a story has to be told. It was a very interesting story at the house of the witch man, of the witch that, that, owned the, who, that, that ran the island, and uh, what, what changed him. I tell you what, it's wonderful to see that you can change people, that you can change cities, you can change towns, you can change countries. And uh, we've been doing this. You've been doing it with us. We love you, appreciate you. We're out of time, and uh, we look forward to tomorrow. God bless you. Keep in touch with us at mcnultyministries.com or christianadventures.com or whatever else is, is uh, that you know about us. F send a right call, whatever. There are so many ways of reaching us now. God bless you. Have a great day.